Jacob, what's it been like having Coach Ablin in, in the room these last couple of months and, and getting out on the grass with him? Yeah, it's been great. Um, <clears throat> just him being with us through bowl prep and everything, it was, was really nice because kind of just able to get that introduction to him and just how he is as a person and um, how he handles us and how he handles just, you know, <clears throat> more of the classroom side of it. But being able to come out and be on the field for spring ball has been great just to see him, I guess, in action and just kind of kind of form those bonds, I guess, that are a lot different than it is, you know, in the classroom, right? When you're out there on the field and, and they say bullets are flying, right, and things are happening, you know, how is he able to handle each different individual, right? It's a lot, it's, you got a lot of different types of guys in, in that room. So he's done a great job so far, just adjusting to us and, and us adjusting to him as well. Uh, coach said you were kind of like another coach out there on the field for him. I mean, where, where do you think you've kind of developed there over the last year or so? Um, just my understanding of the offense and, um, trying to continue to, to progress in that, that aspect and being confident in, in my knowledge and, and what I know and um, you know seeing things that are not right and being able to make it right. I think that's something that earlier on in my career was, you know, maybe I would know something wasn't right but didn't have the confidence, didn't have the, you know, the want to, I guess, to, to call it out and, and to make changes. Um, but yeah, it's been great that he's been able to kind of, you know, like I said, like let me lead, I guess, in our room in a way. Um, and anytime that you know I've got something to say or whatever, I make sure that it's all right with him. Like, hey, this is what we're supposed to be coaching, right? And he's like, yes. And then I'll go correct it, get it fixed, whatever it may be. But um, yeah, I've been really appreciative of him just letting me kind of do my thing and, and be the leader that, that I want to be and that I need to be for our group. Jake, you and Princeton were always sort of a duo, interchangeable. Um, what are the upsides or downsides from going from one tight end to a rotation of two? And is it even better to have three, or do you lose something if you were to use three in the rotation? Um, I think depth is always your friend, um, especially just <clears throat> the nature of, of this conference and, and, and the games that we play, right? They're usually playing a lot of plays, and the way we play, we play really fast. Um, obviously, our up-tempo offense is, is strenuous, and it's hard to kind of you know, condition yourself to get to the point where you can actually really go out there and play by yourself. So being able to have numbers and have depth is, is something that's really big you know, for this group right now. Um, just developing depth and developing, you know, that trust that, you know, our twos, threes, fours, whatever, at any moment can go in and play if we need them to. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's great being able to have, you know, like you said, maybe the one, two or the one, two, three, whatever, just being able to lean on each other. Jacob, with, with everybody's called him Cali, so I will mm -hmm. too. Just yeah. with him coming in, he's a guy that's this is his sixth year of college football, just like you, but he's a new guy, he's new to this offense. How did you kind of, approach him and helping him sort of adjust when he's a guy that's that's old and has played a lot but yeah. hasn't played with you guys yeah no it's definitely it's definitely different man it's a balance between you know looking at him like it like an old guy right <clears throat> I guess I'm, I'm looked at in the program as an old guy like I, I know most of the answers to questions that guys might have and you know I've experienced the things that guys might not quite be familiar with um, and in a way he has too right but just like you said not in this program not with us not with these coaches so um, trying to have that balance and just have understanding and patience with him as in like, yeah, he's a smart guy and he knows a lot of football. He's played a lot of football, but he's still trying to learn it the same way that I did whenever, you know, Hypo and everyone got here. So, um, yeah, just being patient, but he's doing a great job of, of listening and, and adjusting and, you know, just coming in and trying to be a force right away. Jacob, what went into your decision to use your free year of eligibility? I know that was something that you were kind of contemplating there yeah. at the end of the last season. And the, these last couple of months as y'all flipped the calendar, you kind of glad that you made the decision that you did? I mean, whether I'm glad or not, I think that it's too late now, right? Like it's, it's a matter of like, man, I put that behind me and I've, I've truly moved on and um, just can't look back, right? It's a matter of, of, you know, thinking about the reasons why I made that decision, which is, you know, obviously we're gonna have a great team next year. Um, I'm gonna be surrounded by a lot of really great dudes and, and you know, a great coach and Coach Abes and um, just opportunity, right? Opportunity for me to go and prove you know, whatever it is, you know, go out there and play well and um, just excited to do that and just trying to keep my head, my eyes forward. Coach Ablin had a lot of praise for you, but the one thing he said he wants you to improve on is being more of a vocal leader. How yeah. do you embrace that? Yeah, um, just my nature, not the most outspoken and at least haven't been in the past. And so having to kind of, I guess, come out of my shell in that way and. Um, like I mentioned earlier, just having that confidence to speak up and, and, and 
you know, voice my opinion and be willing and be, you know, able to be wrong sometimes, right? There's, you put yourself out there and it's kind of hard to, to um, be vulnerable in front of your peers and in front of people that you look at as your friends. But um, just trying to continue to develop and, and like I said earlier, like he's given me the confidence and given me that, that leeway to go out and, and be vulnerable and try to lead these guys. So very appreciative for that. Since the off season and your tangibles, where have you developed most since the off season? Yeah, um, <clears throat> just my balance. I think um, as far as running, um, my running form, my technique. I guess I'm uh, trying to be more fluid in my routes and be more fluid whenever I'm moving around in space. Um, also, you know, perimeter blocking, right? Blocking in space, blocking guys that are smaller than me and also faster than me, right? Being able to use my body as my advantage and. Um, learn the different fundamentals and the different techniques that it takes to, to be really good um, in all as, uh, facets rather than just being in the box and just catching balls, being able to do pretty much everything. What are Coach Warren's early impressions of freshman Ethan Davis? <laughs> Coach Warren is very, very happy and impressed with Ethan Davis. I think that he came in and um, is eager to learn, um, is excited that he's here, right, and is happy to be here. Um, a lot of times you get guys that come in and, and are you know big wide eyed and they don't really know what's going on. It takes them a really long time to kind of you know get used to the speed and get adjusted to just how I guess hard people are hitting you and you know how quickly things move and you know there definitely is some of that right. Like he's a, he's a young guy and, and he'll he'll learn, but um, just his his willingness and his ability to come in and just clean slate every day. He comes in, listens, goes out there, tries hard whether he's doing the right thing or not, like whatever. But as long as he's trying hard and he shows that he actually cares about, you know, what he looks like on film and cares about our unit as a whole, right? Try not to embarrass the unit, try not to, you know, put anything extra on anybody else, right? Just all those different things um, he's done a really good job of. So very happy with him. Cooper's always had leadership skills, even for a young guy, but yeah. with important pieces moving on from the offensive line room, have you seen a, a different style of leadership from him, or, or is he pretty much the, the same old guy that you've seen as a freshman and a sophomore? Yeah, Coop, like you said, I mean, has, has I think, been almost forced into that leadership role, right? As a center, like, you got to be that guy, right? Like, you have to be someone that can, you know, rally your guys and make calls and do all these different things, have the confidence in yourself to be able to speak up. And um, he's done a great job of that. And I think, like you said, like, now that he's seeing, all right, well, I have the most experience on the line. Like, I know what I'm doing. How can I help other guys come along? We got a lot of new guys in that room too, right? A lot of transfers, a lot of young guys. And so just him being able to, and it's other guys too, right? It's not just him, but, but them really being able to, to bring guys along and, and um, instill confidence within them as well has been, has been really good. Jackie, you, I guess this is your sixth spring, right? Mm -hmm. you, you enrolled early, I guess, when you got here. Yeah. Uh, I'm, a lot of different coaches, different coming off different seasons, all, all those kind of things. Is there anything that stands out to you as being different about this spring with with a new team? Is there anything that, that stood out as something that's um, unusual for me personally, or just for the? In general, yeah, um, I think for me personally, just a little bit more intentionality, kind of in uh, going in each day, thinking about you know what do I want to get better today? Like what well, what was bad yesterday, or what do I need to work on, or you know, being able to take notes and look at my notes and be like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to emphasize, you know, getting that extra yard or whatever on third down or, or being quick to the tuck whenever I'm catching a ball over the middle or um, just anything like that, man, just trying to be more intentional as, as I've seen it a lot. You know, I mean, I'm used to the, to the workload that it takes to get through a spring ball. So now it's just a matter of, of locking in the details of, of the little things. I think, you know, for everybody else, like for the younger guys especially, just learning how to <laughs> – not survive, but how to, right, how to thrive through it and how to take what it is, right? It's hard, it's not easy, we're waking up early, um, a lot of meeting time, just being able to process everything and just push through it and just build a little bit of mental toughness, you know, as we're moving along has been kind of the main emphasis for sure. And what about big, big picture for the program? Um, just, man, last year is over. Uh, we had a good year last year, a great year last year, and um, understanding that we can't just show up and that happen again. Right, we got to put the work in. Last year's team put a lot of work in to get where we were. Um, so, you know, being able to match that, right, or or put in more work and understanding that, you know, we're, it's not just going to get handed to us this year just because we had a good good year last year. So, how much different is it having a guy who's specifically coaching you guys? Obviously, Golish played his part, but he had to oversee the entire offense. How much yeah. different is it having one coach specifically there? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's about how different you would assume, right? It, it's cool that, you know, we're now able to have someone's 100% attention and, and he's not looking at anything else other than us, right? He, he's watching us and he's watching our feet, watching our hand placement, um, <clears throat> watching our routes. And, and, you know, last year we, we had a good system, right? We had other assistants and, and even Golish was most of the time looking at us, right? He's our coach, but um, just having someone that's 100% all the time locked in for us it, it has been really great. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah.